Welcome to another episode of Pakistan on a Plate. My name is Nilofar Afridi Kazi. This former fishing village, Kolachi, has come a long way. What is Kolachi's story? The ancient Greeks called it Krokai. Alexander the Great's admiral spoke of a Moron Tobara island. The Ottomans wrote about a Manora island in 1554 as well. Furthermore, historians argue some parts of Karachi and the island of Manora could be the ancient city of Dabal, which is where Muhammad bin Qasim first ported in the 8th century to later conquer the entire region. The name Karachi was first recorded in a Dutch document. The Khan of Kalat, the former ruler of the region, handed their fort and suzerainty to the de facto rulers of Sindh, the Talpurs, in 1795. In 1729, the Baloch Talpur Mirs expanded this village town of Kolachi, the beginning of converting the fishing town into a trading harbour city which began with the Gulf and the Persian states nearby. Until the British colonists arrived in 1839, the Talpurs remained the rulers of this area. The fisher folks and trading communities of Kolachi have seen many come and go. Stories of bravery are woven into their DNA and Kolachi's histories. The very first fishing settlement near the delta of the Indus River was named Kolachi. This name comes from a Balochi fisher lady. Yep, a woman. Mai Kolachi rescued her husband, stranded in the middle of the ocean during a storm. No one was willing to rescue him. Her love for him overcame her fear, and she decided to venture alone into the storm. Miraculously, she found him and rescued him back. Ever since, in awe of her bravery, her fellow settlement folk named their village Mai Kolachi. In 1947, our founding father, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, chose this very town as the first capital of the new state of Pakistan. History lesson over. Let's visit these Kolachi Islands, walk the, in the footsteps of these brave ancestors of ours. This is Baba Island, where approximately 12,000 lives and souls live. It is considered the smallest neighborhood of Kimari town, which is considered an extension of the main island. शुक्रिया हमारे से बात करने के लिए हम बैठे हैं बाबा आइलैंड जी हां इसकी तारीख क्या है वहां बैठे ये बाबा है बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम मेरा नाम डॉक्टर मोहम्मद यूसुफ है ये जो बाबा आइलैंड और बिट आइलैंड है बाबा और बिट दोनों अलग है बिट जो है सिंध एक लफ्ज है बिट एक पानी का टीला था उसके पानी के बीच में एक टीला होता है उसे बिट बोलते हैं 
तो बिट था उसका नाम तो आस्ते से पढ़ के बिट आ गया लफ्स चेंज हो गया जैसे कराची अब कराची हो गया ये 300 साल पुरानी आबादियों से भी बहुत पहले के हैं असल यहाँ पर जो माइगर पेशा इनका माइगरी है सारे एक ही कमेडी रहती है इंडिया और पाकिस्तान जब एक थे तो दोनों आपस में मतलब हमारे खानदान दोनों खानदान एक साथ सफ़र करते थे आपकी अपनी तारीख कहाँ तक है हमारी अपनी तारीख अपना इंडिया बुज कच्छ अच्छा। वो उनसे तार, तार, हमारे मतलब तारीखी वहाँ से शुरू हो रही है अच्छा। कच्छ इंडिया अच्छा। मडी बुज जुबान एक है एक जुबान है आपने बिट के बारे में तो बता दिया कि इसका नाम कहाँ से आता बिट है बिट बाबा का नाम कहा बाबा का नाम मैं आपको बताऊँ कि बाबा का नाम इस तरह आया जैसे हमारे बाबा दादा बात करते थे जहाँ हम बैठे हुए यहाँ पर रेत होती थी बिल्कुल बारिश की अच्छा। यहाँ जो बैठे हैं यहाँ तो कागजी का कोयला वगैरह डब होता था तो यहाँ पर वो रखते जहाँ जहाज चलते थे पहले अच्छा। जब जहाज चलते थे तो कोयला इस्तेमाल होता था तो इंजन यहाँ स्टार्ट कोयले से होता तो यहाँ डब आप साइड पे इस तरफ थोड़ा आगे चले जाएंगे थोड़ा आगे चार कदम आगे तो वहाँ पर रेत बिल्कुल बारीक होती थी अंग्रेज जो उस जमाने के होते थे यहाँ आते थे खेलते थे और रेत धूप में अपना सिकाई के लिए और खेलने के लिए यहाँ पर आते थे एक दफ़ा वो होटल पे जैसे मार्केट पे जा रहा था बच्चा छोटा था नैंगर पहनी हुई थी तो उसको बुलाया बुलाया उसको बुला रहा था वो भागा तो हम लोग मतलब वालिद साहब को बाबा बोलते हैं तो वो छोड़ करते वो डर के मारे बाबा बाबा करते हुए भागा तो नाम इस तरह बाबा का इस तरह पड़ गया तो ये हिस्ट्री ये है न किसी पीर के हिसाब से या बाबा मजार के हिसाब से नहीं पड़ा अच्छा, लेकिन उस जमाने से जहां हम सुनते आ रहे हैं तो ये हिस्ट्री इसकी ही है और आपका जो खाना है जी कच्ची खाना है कच्ची खाना है और उस कच्ची खाना का मतलब क्या है <coughs> कच्ची खाना का ये कि सिंधी जैसे बिरयानी बनती है उसी तरह हमारी बिरयानी बनती है सालना हमारे हिसाब से बनता है हमारा जो मसाला होता है वो हाथ से पीसा जाता है मशीन ग्लेंडर वगैरह इस तरह नहीं होते वो अपने हाथ से पीस के वो औरतें अपने घर के बनाती हैं बिरयानी में चावल होता है चावल बिरयानी मछेरे की कम्युनिटी है यहाँ चावल खाते चावल खाते हैं क्योंकि ज़्यादातर लांचों में जो जाते हैं रोटी बहुत कम पड़ती है कम बनाते हैं लेकिन चावल ज़्यादा बनाते हैं चावल आते कहाँ से है? चावल शेर से लाते हैं हम लोग माई गिर का खाना का रिवाज आप मुझे कोई छः आइटम बताए हमारे ज़्यादातर फिश सालन होता है बिरयानी होती है कोफ्ते बनाते हैं और बारकी क्यू बनाते हैं अच्छा कबाब बनाते हैं दूसरा ये अपना जो तेल के अंदर तलते हैं वो करते हैं इस तरह पांच छह चीज़ें मतलब जो है ना फेवरेट होती हैं आप यहाँ कोई रेस्टोरेंट्स हैं भेट बाबा में नहीं रेस्टोरेंट कोई भी कोई नहीं कोई नहीं है छोटी छोटी मतलब पंचों की दुकान है और छोटी होटलें हैं जैसे मार्केट के अंदर होते हैं और ये कितनी वैरायटी मछली निकलती है इस इलाके में <coughs> इस इलाके में पहले आप ये पानी देख रहे हैं आज से 20 साल 15 साल पहले की बात मैं बताऊं ये ब्लू वाटर था हम लोग यहाँ बैठ के यहाँ पर बड़ी बड़ी मछलियाँ जो तकरीबन 50-100 किस्म की मछलियाँ यहाँ पकड़ते थे आज ये हाल है हमारा कि यहाँ पर वो पानी पोजिशन है कि पोल्यूशन आप देख रहे हो और ये पूरी कराची का गटर नाले यहाँ पर आके गिरते हैं और यहाँ पर जो मछली थी वो हजरत करके बाकी कुछ मछली मर गई और यहाँ पर अभी वो मछली नज़र वो नहीं आ रही है जो आप 20 साल पहले ही बाद में बताऊँ कि यहाँ बैठ के बड़ी आधे घंटे के अंदर बड़ी बड़ी मछलियों की टोकरी हम भर लेते थे और मैंने यहाँ इन गलियों में मैं थोड़ी थे भी थी और गंदगी मैंने बहुत देखी यहाँ के जो अपने लोग हैं उनने कुछ अवेयरनेस कोई वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट पर कोई कुछ ध्यान नहीं है नहीं वो असल मसला ये है कि यहाँ पर सनेटर आज से 10-15 साल पहले 17 सिपर थे 17 सिपर थे आज वो गवर्नमेंट के सिपर सिर्फ छः रह गए वो भी सुबह आते अपने प्राउड काम करके चले जाते हैं एक दो मछेरों से बात कर रही थी वो मुझे बता रहे थे कि खातन लड़कियाँ माइगी नहीं बन सकती इसलिए कि वो पर समुंदर के अंदर जाके वो काम वगैरह जो होते हैं समुंदर उसमें ये काम नहीं कर पा रही है कम क्योंकि एक तो रफ सी रफ बहुत होता है और दूसरा वहाँ पर ये जाते हैं आठ दस दस दिन के लिए पंद्रह दिन के लिए तो वो नहीं जा सकते आप अंदरूनी सन चले जाएं वो सन दरिया के अंदर वो औरतें काम करती हैं वो इसलिए काम करती है वो समुंदर दरिया जो है ना वो बिल्कुल मतलब लेवल होता है 
उसमें कोई मतलब रफ नहीं होता मगर अलाउ तो अलाउ नहीं है अच्छा तो ये अलाउ और नहीं अलाउ ये कौन करता है ये गवर्नमेंट करती है गवर्नमेंट आपको बताती है कि आप ये पेशा कर सकते हैं ये पेशा नहीं कर सकते असल मसला औरतों के लिए जो एक क्रू कार्ड बनता है क्रू लिस्ट बनती है वो नहीं बनाते हैं बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया जी हमारे से बात करने के लिए थैंक यू थैंक यू The western bay of Karachi's ha harbor has endangered mangrove forests. What are mangroves? Mangroves are trees or shrubs which grow in a tidal coastal swamp. They have lots of tangled roots. Mangroves grow above ground and in a combined form form a thicket. Hence they are also referred to as a forest. Mangroves protect shorelines from hurricanes, flooding, and also assist in reducing erosion of the water, flora, and sediments through their roots. They also balance the water quality and filter pollutants out of the water. There are three types of mangrove: red, black, and white. They are distinguished by the color of the bark. Animals which feed off these mangroves thrive these include turtles sea urchins blue crabs mantis fiddler crabs and many varieties of fish pakistani mangroves are located along the delta of the indus river and the arabian sea primarily in sindh and balochistan bitai island has approximately 11000 people they are also linked to the fishing industry everyone here i spoke to and met are associated with fishing off we go to manora island now or manora a small peninsula located just off the south of the port of karachi a beach we used to frequent as children freely safely without a care in the world how things have changed in less than a generation Manora also serves as a protective barrier between Karachi harbor to the north and the Arabian Sea like a buffer the first settlers of this area the Kalmati Baloch tribe raised an army to defend the port from the british invasion but eventually in 1839 they lost the final battle right here the original fort was built by the baloch and is buried beneath the british built naval base but the lighthouse is still visible a reminder of our past and our colonial recent history the british built it in 1889 by a Canadian engineer Alain Chater de Lobie Sadly these fishing islands the heritage of these ancient Karachi people are severely neglected by everyone separated from the mainland they remain as our forgotten past Centuries of people have come to Karachi The city mirrors them all the mandirs churches mosques architecturally all of these periods many of the buildings in classical british colonial style a stark contrast to the mughal gothic style of lahore modern karachi also reflects its commercial roots in all its diversity similarly culinarily Karachi mirrors its past and present. One of the recipes I share with you today has a lovely story. On one of my safari trips in interior Sindh, I had heard of a fascinating recipe from my pal Murtaza Jatoi. Fish halwa. Yes, I said fish 
and halwa. When you think about it, it does make sense. Fisher folks would make a sweet meat of fish. They are, after all, the people of the sea and the river. Well, this is how it's made. The younger Jutoi, Arif Jutoi, was kind enough to share the recipe of a gapshap in Karachi. Recipe, fish halwa. Wash and clean the fish. Then blend in a shallow bowl the fish and the whole wheat flour and keep it aside for 10 minutes. In the meantime, boil the almonds in water so you can easily remove the skin. After 10 minutes, remove the wheat off the skin of the fish through rubbing. This is an ancient way of removing the fish smell. <laughs> नीचे पानी है नीचे पानी है इसका पानी स्टीम पे पके हैं नाउ लेट्स बिगिन डीबोनिंग द फिश रिमूव द फ्लैश स्लोली एंड मेटिकुलसली एंड सेट असाइड फॉर लेटर मेक श्योर ऑल द व्हाइट फ्लैश इज केप्ट while removing completely the black flesh isne socha hoga ah ha 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 to ye kahan se ijad hua kisne banaya tabhi to aap hum log bana rahe hain ji i mean soche ki chini aur machli kisne socha hoga ya chini hai dekhiye chini hai pehle ya shayad ke sath kiya hoga ya gur ke sath kiya wallah alam khuda behtar jante hain पहले गुड़ था बाद में चीनी बाद में आई जो पहले गुड़ तैयार हो जाएगा ना तो फिर आप कहेंगे वाकई इसीलिए उस उनकी खुशबू के लिए देखो आपके सामने क्या आटा डाला ताकि फिश की खुशबू खत्म हो जाए कच्चा आटा वाली जो खुशबू होती है वो खत्म हो गई ठीक है अब जब ये दूध बशूद पड़ेगा ये सब चीजें पड़ेगी तो जाहिर है सिर्फ खाने में पता चलेगा हमें फिश खा रहे फिश का हलवा खा रहे हैं इन अ लार्ज वाइड वॉक पुट इन द क्लैरिफाइड बटर and warm it up now add the cardamom pods to flavor the clarified butter you can tell when it starts crackling over the medium heat now at this point add the white fish flesh into the wok and stir vigorously immediately add the warmed milk and continuously stir don't stop stirring until the milk and the fish are completely blended in smoothly after about 5 10 minutes add the food coloring and the sugar keep stirring once the oil separates from the fish halwa you can add the almonds pistachios raisins stir for another 2 minutes and voila we have fish halwa it's done Arif, come on. <laughs> fish halwa, Arif. When was the last time you had fish halwa? Uh, three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it's surprising you don't get the fish uh, smell. Yeah. You would never know if this is fish halwa. It's amazing. This is probably the most unusual recipe thus far in the series of Pakistan on a plate. Thank you so much, Arif. Oh, it's amazing. I love it. Thank you so much. The Jatois are a Baloch tribe which came to Sindh aligned with the Mirs of Talpur. And a foodie story which is unique to the Jatois is in order here too. Thank you so much for sharing this recipe with Pakistan on a plate. Most welcome. I have been fascinated since the day I heard about grenade. What is grenade? Folklore depending on who you would like to uh, which version you uh, would accept. I I have heard that it was started in my family. Uh, I mean again many decades ago I believe 
It is basically a uh, chicken, mm -hmm. it is, um, which is made into a kima. Uh, certain ingredients are added to it. And uh, it's, uh, it is well known because of the way it's the style in which it is made. Okay. It and is basically uh, a chicken kima wrapped around a frame of chicken bones. And then those are basically cooked over a charcoal grill. Okay. When I was um, a guest um, and your brother uh, Murtaza told me that when your ancestors actually moved from Balochistan into Sindh to assist the Talpurs and that particular great-grandfather did not like red meat and your chefs in the battle encampment didn't know what to do to give their sardar and they were not going to give him of course vegetables and beef or fruit or just dry fruit so they had to come up with something ingenious to for the like of a sardar but not red meat so that's how uh, over the encampment fires coals they beat chicken uh, breast meat into layers and layers and then with milk and almonds and whatever dry foods that they, they could come up with and layer it for it to be substantive enough um, and rich enough like in their minds for red meat and yet it wasn't red meat. And so this is how uh, this particular recipe was uh, developed uh, because there was this one jatoi who did not like red meat. I see. Uh, you know, so this was the story, and I ever since but then I was that, fascinated uh, by it. That, that would sound logical because uh, being since uh, Jatois are Baloch, Balochis have uh, the tradition of again uh, cooking over the charcoals uh, yeah. and also burying um, uh, food right. food underground. Particularly, you must know that there's one particular kind of a baked bread which is baked underground. That's right. That's right. Uh, so yes. Uh, I it sounds, uh, I, 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 can, I, I can concur with your <laughs> <laughs> what and you then, have heard. Yes, and also I've heard recently, and in fact I think your chefs over here, who are generational chefs, were telling me that um, this dish was also served on behalf of uh, the Jatoi family when the Shah of Iran uh, came. That's correct. Uh, when the Shah of Iran came, actually my father was assigned by Mr. Bhutto, because uh, the Shah of Iran did not actually uh, know how to shoot. Okay. Uh, actually, both the Shah of Iran and uh, uh, the president of UAE, okay. uh, Sheikh Zayed bin uh, uh, Sultan Al Nayan. Okay. So when they both okay. were frequent visitors to Pakistan, Ji. and Mr. Bhutto used to enjoy taking them to the in, in, uh, to Sindh or Shikar. Yes. Uh, he, my father had been assigned by the my, Mr. Bhutto to uh, host, uh, them. host host them and also basic basically give them the basic training in how to use a shotgun. <laughs> So that naturally they would come and they would uh, have, uh, have a meal after the shikar. Gee, gee, gee. So the, these kind of dishes were prepared and served to them. Okay. Thank you so much for talking to oh, us. You're most welcome. And I look forward to learning how to make grenades. Most welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here is the family recipe, which they call grenade. I've renamed it ala jatoi. First, you need to soak the chicken in clean drinking water and make some holes with a sharp fork or knife all across the body of the chicken. Take the chicken whole and put it on a steak. Tie it with a natural fiber jute thick string. Take the legs and bring it to one end and flatten the body of the chicken. This requires a coal burning stove Place the chicken on this stove and cook it slowly and evenly. The purpose is to dry out all the excess moisture. Keep the chicken turning around until it is cooked all the way through and dry. You know it's done when the color of the chicken turns reddish in color. You may use a tissue to dab the excess water off the chicken periodically. Now remove the chicken off the coals and let it cool down aside. Remove the jute ropes around the chicken and start deboning the chicken when it's cooled off. Make sure you keep all the bones aside which we will use to make for a frame later. 
इसको आप सिंधी में क्या बुलाते हैं कीमे की सीख कीमे की सीख ग्रेनेट इसलिए नाम रखा गया जो बनता है इसी तरह से कहा ग्रेनेट बन जाती है इन अ बोल टेक द मिल्क एंड द बोनलेस चिकन एंड ब्लेंड इट वेल ग्राइंड इट फाइनली इन टू अन मेन स्कीमा Now let's make the frame with the bone set aside the grenade keema seek frame take a fistful of the chicken bones tightly make it into a ball use a jute rope to ensure it stays as a circle also wrap it with newspaper or tissue paper to keep it bound on a wooden flat board cut off both ends of the frame of the grenade seek take a cleansed seek stick and pierce the grenade frame through the center slide it up and down to ensure it does slide easily and so when it's cooked and we need to remove it it is easily removable Now combine the chicken flesh with the almonds, raisins, salt, the masala, turmeric and oil. Blend it well. You know it's blended beautifully when you can smell the aromatic paste. Now apply this paste onto the grenade frame thickly and smoothly on all sides. Take the jute rope and tie the frame securely. Start with a knot on top. Twirl it around until it's completely encapsulating the seek and then start again horizontally. It's time to cook. Let's take it to the cold burning stove and once again turn it slowly and constantly. This is a tedious process. one has to ensure all sides of the grenade are cooked evenly and also right through our stole traditionally takes at least 2 hours for the grenade ala jatoi to cook it was very evident that the chefs truly love this recipe cooking with their heart once it's done remove the jute ropes by turning it around and then sliding it off expertly off the seek there would be no intense so like no wala right amazing try it and tell me so spicy but i don't like spicy I the original no, bologna bologna mm. bologna is uh, is this Very nice. So what do you think? Good. Amazing, no? So now ladies and gentlemen, this is how you make grenade. An old family recipe from the Jatoi clan. Mmm. Karachi city of fisher folk, traders, travelers, Sufis, all have come and settled from the Greek Arabs, Persians, Turks, Baloch, Portuguese and the English. This little town grew for all Pakistanis. Its recipes, flavors, aromas, reflecting and savoring and blending dazzling our taste buds.
Abdul Shah Ghazi, the eclectic mystic whose shrine in the middle of Karachi, built in all its glory by a Parsi merchant named Jahangir Khotari, couldn't be more symbolic of what Kolachi is. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Kolachi, the islands of the large metropolis of Karachi. Until next time, Khudafis!